Good day, and we're going to be continuing now looking at how to design structures for fire and overall building resistance. Imagine you were designing the building behind me for fire safety and wanting to make sure that if a fire broke out and spread through the building, what would you need to consider and what would you need to do to make sure that the steel, the concrete, the timber, whatever other material you're using is safe for fire? And also, while the fire is burning, what sort of loads do you have inside? How many people are there? What sort of, sort of materials, furniture, etc. are going to be present at that time when you design the structure so that you can make sure your columns and your beams and all the other elements are strong enough to withstand the loads placed upon them? Thinking about the design of real structures and fire, Think about some of the following considerations. Now, ask the question of what would you design the structure for? What sort of people and furniture and all the contents? Now, that we usually call our live load or imposed load, the things that vary with time. As a structural engineer, if I was designing the building behind me, I'd have to think about what's the worst case loads that it's going to experience, it, probably in a 50 year period. What would be the imposed loads, the, the people and the furniture and all the things that vary with time? What are the dead loads or the, the permanent loads, the things that are always there? And in a 50 year period, that might be protest action, that could be a really large event that occurs. And the floor I would probably design for something between two and a half and five kPa, somewhere between 250 and 500 kilograms a square meter. But now, if I was thinking now, when the fire breaks out, is that all going to be there? So when it comes to structural fire design, the st statistical chance of the worst possible load in a 50 year period occurring at the exact same time as a fire is quite small. So what we find is we have different load combinations that we use for fire design. But then we do have to think about other factors. For instance, we've got all the load coming down the columns, but then the fire burning around the column causing it to heat up. So the thermal expansion may counteract a thermal compression from the, the structure above and you can have some very complicated load scenarios being created and often in a real building collapses what you find it's actually that thermal expansion that's the problem rather than the necessarily the, the material degradation and then beyond that we're also going to be looking in the section at strains because strains in structures at high temperature become a lot more complex normally we just have a mechanical strain we pull on an item and it gets longer but now we heat up an item and it gets longer and then we We've got a complex interaction as things heat up and bend and deflect and all the things that follow with that. And so in the following section we'll be looking at overall structural design for fire safety, looking at loads, load combination strains and similar factors.